Critical online spaces in the U.S. jeopardized this morning by Chinese hackers. Microsoft reports a state-run group is threatening critical parts of the country's cyber infrastructure. Early analysis indicates their goal is espionage. Many fear these attacks could turn into a global threat with the government already warning they pose a growing risk to Americans' intellectual property. Political correspondent Kevin Cirilli reports on this situation and, of course, yeah. the potential co uh, consequences that could stem from this. Kevin, good morning. Good morning. There are three U.S. military bases on Guam, which is in a strategic part of the Indo-Pacific. Should the Chinese Communist Party look to attack Taiwan or provide some type of blockade through Taiwan? So the general thinking this morning is that the Chinese hackers try to disrupt communications from the U.S. and its Five Eyes allies, including in the Five Eyes Agreement partnership, the U.K., Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. So this is a strategic military base and the strategic disruption from communications could have severe concerns in terms of the ability of the United States military to, cut, to communicate with its allies in that region at a time in which China is increasingly going aggressive uh, in Taiwan. Let's pull up specifically what the Chinese espionage tried to do in the Vault Typhoon, as it's known. They tried to infect a critical U.S. cyber infrastructure, laying the groundwork to hurt communications between the U.S. and Asia, and again, those Five Eyes partners. Tactics are made making it intrusion hard to detect. So they've been very, uh, 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 they've had, the, the Chinese have had strength in terms of how they have tried to shield the way that they've done this. And this has been going on since mid-2001. Let's pull up a statement now from Jen Easterly, the director of the cybersecurity branch of the U.S. government, who says, quote, for years, China has conducted aggressive cyber operations to steal intellectual property and sensitive data from organizations around the globe. There's another part of this story that's crucial, and that is the public-private partnership element of the U.S. Uh, government, as well as its ability to work with companies like Microsoft. Microsoft also out with a statement uh, today uh, talking about the disruption that the Chinese espionage uh, did, in fact, conduct. So uh, uh, the ability for the U.S. government to work with uh, prominent U.S. Uh, tech companies like Microsoft is also at the forefront of this at a time in which there is growing geopolitical risk because of the Chinese Communist Party's continued actions insinuating that they are going to cause some type of disruption in against Taiwan. Bonnie, Kevin Cirilli in D.C. for us this morning. Thank you, Kevin. All right, let's get to Jamil Jaffer, the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute at the George Mason uh, University's Law School. He's also a venture partner at the Paladin Capital Group. He joins us live now to discuss the security that uh, Jamil, always good to see you. So first, the spy balloon, now this. How concerned should the U.S. be about Chinese surveillance and the severity of this data breach? Well, you know, Alex, obviously this is a significant threat. The Chinese have long been targeting U.S. infrastructure, uh, trying to get access to our critical infrastructure to, uh, one, collect intelligence, but also uh, in the long run to potentially take action um, if there is a scenario where they choose to do so. You can imagine uh, they've gone after now critical infrastructure in Guam and the like. Uh, that's obviously critical if there's a Taiwan contingency uh, for them to deploy not just collection capabilities, Alex, but potential malware that can destroy data, destroy systems, and make it hard for the U.S. to operate in that theater. Talk a little bit more about that with Guam being the center of this, yeah. but it's really all about Taiwan, or it seems. That's exactly right, Jay. You know, uh, the Chinese have been indicating a number of threats towards Taiwan. We've seen significant numbers of Chinese fighter jets and bombers uh, breaching the air defense identification zone, crossing the center line of Taiwan Strait. Um, and so we know that there's a clear uh, and present threat to Taiwan. Um, and Guam is a key operations base for the United States. So when the Chinese target even as we've seen now for potential just collection of intelligence, we know that that same capability that allows intelligence collection is the same capability that allows the deployment of malware that can take down computer systems and make it very hard for the U.S. to conduct military and other operations in the region. Mm. So for our viewers who may not be um, read in on our Chinese relations, um, explain to them and walk them through big picture why they should care about something like this, a data breach um, that could potentially have a, a wide w ripple effect. 
Sure. Well, you know what's interesting, Alex, about this particular hack uh, is that the Chinese have come in uh, through a variety of new methods. They've been looking at small and home office routers, which is the kind of thing that a lot of us have in our homes. Right. In addition, they've been, been exploiting the Microsoft infrastructure. So the Microsoft Active Directory system, the way that Microsoft logs people in, uh, has been exploited by the Chinese in this way to get long-term access. They're able to create their own user accounts and hide inside the systems the same way the Russians did in the Solar Winds hack. That makes it very dangerous because it's hard to get them out once they're in that way. And so what people need to know is as they see this alert coming out from the NSA, from CISA, from our, our global partners, as well as Microsoft, they need to take action now to get ahead of this. And that's why it's so important, Alex uh, and Jay, for companies to invest in cybersecurity software, get ahead of this, and partner with the U.S. government and their allied governments to make sure they're defending themselves adequately. And really quick, Jamil, I mean, this may be a silly question. I don't really know too much about hacking, but... Is there a way to know that there is another user inside of your account? That, that's a great question, Alex. In fact, what the what the government has disclosed today are ways of identifying whether these folks have been in your accounts. They show the actual kind of commands that they use. They show the kind of files they create, the kind of things they're looking for. They're trying to get access to information about your passwords and your user accounts so they can create their own. And so if you have an active system today, you can go look, do I have these, uh, these vulnerabilities? And do I see this kind of activity in my logs? Now, not every turns their log files on, so that's another thing that the government's recommending you do to prevent these kind of attacks, or at least find them. Wow. Any, uh, any evidence, you, you use the word access. Mm -hmm. Is there any evidence that they are messing or stealing personal information of Americans? Well, there's, so there's no question, Jay, that in this case, the Chinese have absolutely been taking uh, information that is on those systems. Whether it's personal information about American individuals or not, we don't know, but we know they're collecting mass amounts of intelligence. But the other challenge here is it's not just intelligence collection, because you can also deploy capabilities that we haven't seen them do it yet, but we know this same capability that gives you access to get information allows you to deploy the kind of things that can collect keystrokes, collect passwords, and delete or modify data. And that's the really scary part, Jay and Alex. This is a thorny relationship between yeah. the U.S. and China mm -hmm. on, so, for, on so many fronts, Taiwan, uh, but they, so, they rely on each other for trade right. so much. So if you're the U.S. government, how do you respond to something like this? Well, you know, there's a few things you could do. One, get the information out, allow people to help defend themselves, partner closely with, with private sector companies to help ensure that they're defending themselves and that people and that companies are buying the right kind of capabilities to, to protect themselves. But on top of that, you've got to deter this kind of behavior. You want to push back and let the Chinese know, hey, we know you're in there and we're going to hit you back if you use any malware against us. We haven't done a great job deterring in the cyber domain. We need to give the NSA and Cyber Command more authority to take that kind of action when they need to to prevent these kind of cyber hacks. So what's the next step? I mean, staying ahead of a hacker, ahead of a criminal is always a hard thing to do, especially as technology just uh, gets smarter and smarter and smarter. There's always somebody a few steps ahead of you. So what is the next move for the U.S.? You know, it's, it's a great and important question, Alex. So, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about how to invest in companies that can do good cybersecurity. That's what companies who are who have uh, information and data they need to protect need to do as well. They need to identify best in breed security solutions and spend the money and time and effort it takes to install those and keep them updated. So, and for individual users, they wanna do the same thing. Buy that security system, make sure you're using strong passwords and the like, and to the extent you can, lock down your email accounts and make sure you're not sharing sensitive data through your email accounts. Or don't mm. use the same password for everything. Well, that's just true. Yeah, and it don't make it password one, two, three. Exactly. <laughs> and Jay, I have, I know you I, do I, that. I have a lot that's of exactly imagination right. for my passwords, okay? <laughs> Jamil Dapper, always good to see you. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> Thanks, Alex.